my name is Colin Becker. We're here at Redmond Movies and Stories, and today I'm pretty excited. We get to talk about the new Maxi Crane Toro head. It's a two axis pan tilt remote head that can hold up to 55 pounds. So, you know, you can fit pretty much any camera that you'd like on there from your Arri Alexas all the way down through, say, a Canon C200 or something of that level. Um, Right here, we just have it laid out as it comes in its hard case. Uh, we've got a number of tie downs to attach your camera system. We've got a joystick control. Now, it can also be controlled with wheels, but uh, some people do prefer the single operator joystick control. Um, we have a control monitor. This is a touchscreen control that allows you to adjust all of the various settings so that your head works the way that you need it to for your operating style. And then we have various power, uh, power sources. So right here you have your AC 24 volt power that can be hooked up to a VCLX block battery or any type of power source that you need. So first impressions, I mean, it's beautifully constructed. The material, it's hard anodized aluminum. Uh, it feels incredibly solid. Feels like you could drop it off a mountain and it would survive. Hope you would never do that but I bet you could. Um, you know, a few specifics that I noticed right away, it uses a Mitchell base, which is, as many of you know, the industry standard. So you can mount it either upright or underslung on a set of sticks, on a dolly, on a jib, uh, you know, whatever you need. So now I've got my camera on there, um, next thing to do is to balance the head. As with all my remote heads, you need to have a balance and what I mean by that is you need to have the weight of the camera evenly distributed uh, on either side of this axis and then also balanced top to bottom so that when you move your camera it stays exactly where it needs to be. And so right now as you can see I have it extremely bottom heavy. Um, the nice thing about the Toro head is it's got brushless motors and so you don't have to disengage them in order to balance it. A lot of heads, you know, you have to disengage the motors and completely from the mechanism before you can get the freedom of movement to balance your camera. Um, and so on this it's got four knobs. Once you're ready to shoot you want to tighten them all down. They've done a really good job of making it so that when you are balancing, even if you only tighten down one of them, it will stay in place. So then coming into balance, you just undo your, undo your knob, and then we push up until, I think that ought to be good. And then to test it, tilt. And so that's staying exactly where it needs to be. Looks like it might be a little bit back heavy. So, I just slide this forward on my dovetail the slightest bit. Now it's perfect. So I can put that anywhere I need to, and it's good. All right, so one issue that we've all run into with remote heads is running cable, right? So a lot of the time you're trying to figure out how to tie cable into various arms of whatever head you're using, or just a way to keep them out of the way so that you don't have cables hanging off in mass from your camera. So the guys at MaxiCrane came up with a really good way to solve that problem, and they've made every axle on this remote head hollow. So you've got your pan, and both of your tilt axes are completely hollow, so you can pass cables through them. So rather than plugging into your camera and then figuring it out, you can just take your cable and feed it up through the head itself, and then straight through the axles so that it doesn't create any drag or anything, and then you have a nice clean cable run that doesn't get in the way of anything. Getting this head up and running is really easy, you've only got two cables. You've got a six pin Limo communication cable that will run from the head to the back of your control unit, to the COM port. Um, and then you've got a three pin Limo power cable. 
And so I'm gonna do exactly what I did with our video feed and just go right up through the head to COM port. And that will just plug in right there. Clean that up a little bit. And then we'll run our power cable, which I currently have hooked up to one of our VCLX batteries. And we'll just go again, same thing, straight up through your axis. And then power just plugs in right there. Right, so on the back of your control unit, you've got three ports, your COM port, joystick, and pan bar. The pan bar is sort of like your Moby Mimic. Um, it's kind of a cool thing. We don't have that here today, so we'll just be dealing with the joystick and the wheels. Um, and so you take your COM cable from the head, just go straight into the COM port, and then you've got your joystick, which comes in with a five pin Limo connector, just right into your joystick there. And then when you turn on your head, your control unit will come on. All right, so now we've got everything set up. I've got this set up with the wheel controls, which is my preferred method of controlling a t uh, remote head. Um, you know, generally speaking, some people really like the joystick, but I prefer this. It gives you a little bit more of a precise control of the camera. Um, I've rebuilt the camera with a 180 millimeter Cook S4, so we have a nice long lens. So we can see how accurate the motion on this actually is and how good a job the guys over Maxi Crane have actually done. These focus circles on our charts are probably about four inches apart and you can see it's taking me about five full turns of the wheels to get it to pan from circle to circle and that is pretty incredible. That's a really, really sensitive control. So with a longer lens on there, you need that, and this would allow you to put a pretty enormous lens on the Toro head and still be in perfect control. As I push here, everything. All right, and so I can control the speed on this hand wheel set here. I've got my speed dials right here. I can change these as needed. So let's set this to one. A little more powerful than we've been at, so it'll move a lot more quickly. And so, you know, the other really nice thing about this head is how quiet it is. You know, a lot of larger remote heads are extremely noisy, especially once you start really cranking on the motors. Um, the brushless motors on this head are staying completely silent all the way throughout, even when I have it cranked all the way up to its max sensitivity. Right, so now getting into our control unit, our touchscreen monitor, it's laid out really well. It's extremely simple. You've got three options along the top for pan, tilt, and roll. With the Toro head, it's a two axis unit. You'll only be able to use pan and tilt. Um, within that, from left to right, we have a touchscreen controllable slider bar for speed, dampening, motor acceleration, and then this fourth one over here is if you have the wheels plugged in, that's how you turn them on or off. Um, now down here in the bottom right corner for each of our options, we have a calibrate button. And so within that, you can control the dead band in the system. Um, then there's also this little checkbox for inverting the control. So if you're on the joystick and you want pushing the joystick away from you to be tilting up, you can set it. So with the dead band, for the wheels, you want that all the way down. But with the joystick, oftentimes people like having a little bit of dead band just so that they're not swinging their camera around like crazy. And this allows you to do it really easily. And additionally, we all know when we're on set, we need to make changes to our cameras and you never want to have to shut your unit off in order to do that because it just takes up time. Uh, and so down here in the bottom right corner, again, there is this button that says armed. If you click that, it switches to disarmed. The motors are completely disengaged. 
you're now free to adjust your camera, adjust balance and everything, and then all you need to do to get the system back up and running is click that button again, you're back to armed, and you have control again. So we started out with the wheel controls. As I said, that's my preferred method of controlling a remote head. Uh, in my hand, I've got the joystick control. This one has got a pretty sizable joystick. They also have another option that has a smaller one. So say you're a single operator and you just want your thumb to rest right down in here. And they also had put another uh, joystick on the bottom for third axis. Right, and so on our monitor here, the way that these controls affect the joystick, the dampening gives you that nice smooth acceleration into your movement. So we've got it about 46% right now. And so it's nice and smooth from beginning to end. So it comes to a nice slow stop, right? And then, so this acceleration slider, basically what it does for me is it makes it so that, say I have, in this case, I've still got the 180 millimeter lens on there. Um, and so any tiny movement of the head is gonna be really apparent in your image. Um, and so the acceleration knob makes it so that it's really easy to get tiny, tiny, fine movements because that maximum speed, the maximum motor power won't come in until I'm all the way over on the edge of where the joystick can go. So everything else in the middle is super sensitive and nice and slow and smooth and precise. 